This is the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. In this episode, we're going to talk about DHCP auto provision. So the ability to automatically upgrade new ICX devices uh, and to automatically give them a, a configuration file on the fly without anyone ever having to log into the box. So this is done with DHCP. Um, and how it's going to work is the client machine, the new ICX, We'll plug into the network, it'll go out and get a DHCP address. The DHCP server is then going to give it the address of a TFTP server and a file name or a, a bin file or a manifest file in order to, to uh, check to see if it has the latest code and to upgrade the code. And then it's going to go back to the TFTP server after that and look for a certain file with a, um, with a running configuration on it. So, um, so in the, in the, previous, we set up our um, DHCP server on an ICX. So it doesn't have to be our DHCP server. It can be any DHCP server that does auto, DHCP auto provision, uh, but it needs to support two options. So 067 is a boot file image option and 150 is a TFTP server IP option. So provided your DHCP server software can give those two options out to clients, then it certainly doesn't have to be us as a switch. However, in this case, uh, in a previous webcast, we uh, configured our DHCP server pool uh, called demo. Um, we, we were giving it the default gateway of 2.1 to the clients. We set up a DNS server. We excluded some addresses. We use the default lease, which is 24 hours. That's fine. Uh, and then we set a network address of 192.168.20/24. So in order to bind those, um, we create a VE down here. So this VE is actually bound to VLAN 2, uh, which is where my new switch will plug into. And it has an IP address of 192.168.2.1/24. So this IP address is in the same uh, IP subnet as my pool, so it automatically binds those together. You don't have to tell that interface to, to use that pool. Um, so we did that in a, in a previous episode. And uh, so in order to complete the work for uh, DHCP auto provision, we need to add a couple of things here. So we'll go into config T, uh, we'll go back into our pool so IP DHCP server pool called demo. Uh, and then we need to add uh, the name of our boot file and the uh, TFTP server. So we will paste those in. So in this case, I've used a uh, manifest file. So the boot file fi08040 underscore manifest.txt. So those manifest files actually come from uh, my brocade. So when you download the software, uh, you download, you know, 08040.zip, which has all the files in it for the 7750, the 7450, the 7250, um, in, in the, in the correct directories. And then that manifest file uh, is also on my brocade. So it, um, if you just download that file and put it on your TFTP server and then extract those zip files uh, onto the TFTP directory, then everything will be in the right directory and that manifest based on the type of hardware you, you boot up, it'll look in the manifest file, grab the correct uh, bin files and automatically upgrade that box. So the second option there, the TFTP server address, that is where um, where you're going to go to to download your manifest file, right, and your uh, and or your bin file. So instead of a manifest file or a manifest.txt file, that could have been just a bin file. So it could have been, you know, just a regular uh, router code or switch code bin file, um, and it would do that. But in in my case, I want to use a manifest because then it doesn't matter what kind of hardware, as long as it's an ICX platform that supports that code version, it'll be in the manifest file. So and then lastly, because I made changes to my pool, I now need to redeploy my pool. So uh, if we do a show IP um, DHCP server address pool demo. Uh, so we now see that I have two active leases and it's active. I can see my, uh, my gateway, my exclusions, etc. I now also see this boot file called manifest.txt, and um, I see that I now have a TFTP server, right? So, um, so I am ready to go to auto provision. 
So I'm going to boot up the new uh, uh, switch. Mine happens to be an ICX um, 7250. And um, so we'll have a look at the bindings. Um, so it's bound, the new, the new switch that's, uh, that's bound is now 172.168.2.4. So let's tell that to that device and we'll have a look at what happened uh, when it booted up. So um, I'm just going to do a show log here. And so remember, our logs go, uh, the newest events are at the top of the log. So we can see down at the bottom, the DHCP service client service started. Um, it got an IP address on its interface, so 2.4, as we saw previously on, on port 1113. Then it sets the image file download to primary because it's booted from primary, so it's going to replace that primary file. It reads the manifest file, so there's my manifest. It reads that up, um, and then it compares those. So it compares what's in my flash to what's in the manifest file. In this case, it's determined that it's the same code. So SPR 08040.bin um, is in the is in the uh, is the same as what's in the primary flash, so there's no need for an update. If those weren't different, of course, it would do an upgrade on the code, uh, but in this case, it didn't need to. So then it moves on to the configuration file. So the configuration file, we can see it tries several different files. So it starts at the most specific and works up. So in this case, it uses named ICX 7250-24p-router MAC address of my of my new switch dash config.cfg. So it's looking for a file named that on the TFTP server. It doesn't find that. So it moves on to basically the same one without the dash CFG. Uh, if it doesn't find that, it moves on to just the 24p dash router dash CFG. So if you had many uh, ICX 7250 dash 24p uh, switches and they all had basically the same configuration you can all have them you know um, uh, append into their their running configuration with that with that configuration file um, and then we move on to ICX 7250.cfg if it doesn't find that so if you had many 7250s you know some 24ps 48ps uh, 24 and 48 non ps etc um, and you had a generic configuration for those devices you could you could put that into that file. And lastly, it looks for a file called brocade.cfg, um, and that would, could be for anything, right? So 7750, 7450, 7250 could all pull out that, that brocade.cfg. So those names are built into the device itself, so you don't have to um, cr create that configuration on the client device. It, um, those are just built in. So it automatically appends its own MAC address onto the file um, in order to choose the right one. But anyway, so I didn't find any of those files. So it, um, it's, uh, it up here said TFTP is unable to download the running config and then it finished the boot cycle. But should, if it found one of those files, it would have appended the, those commands or that config into the running config and you would have been up and running without anyone ever logging onto the device. So um, obviously there's a lot more information uh, and more options about this command in the configuration guide. Um, so I urge you, if you're gonna deploy this, to go and look at that in more detail, but that's the basis of how this command works and it's, uh, it's great, especially if you have a large number of switches to deploy. Anyway, thanks for joining and appreciate it.